So today we're going to build a 24 volt simple off-grid system using these two 100 amp hour 12 volt mini batteries from Rododo, a Victron Smart Solar MPPT 130, and this 3000 watt 24 volt inverter from Reliable. We're also going to install a smart shunt. This is uh, from TBD, uh, which is kind of like a Victron lookalike, but Victron does make one of these as well. Uh, this is just a cheaper alternative. All right, so let's get started. So the absolute first thing that we have to do is we need to charge these batteries up to max individually. If we do not charge these batteries up and we place them in series, they may be at different states of charge, meaning this one may be at 30% and this one may be at 50%. When you hook them up in series and you try to start using it, these batteries will never balance. And so you'll always end up with one being too low of a state of charge and you'll have a reduced capacity so make sure that you charge these up individually before placing them in series so we'll start the charger now we'll charge this one up first when it's complete we'll charge that one up and then we'll start assembling all right both batteries have completely charged so let's assemble and i'm going to reuse this board that i've used in other projects so i think what we're going to do is we're going to put the two batteries side by side here And I want to be able to use these terminals on the inverter as a place to also connect my charge controller. So I want this simple as possible. You can get individual terminal posts that you could mount or even bus bars. But really the only difference between these and those is that these are attached directly to the inverter and there's no cable in between. We're just trying to make this as simple as possible. So we're just going to use these. So we'll basically mount the uh, inverter upside down. I think I'm going to have to put a little spacer block underneath there because this is a rather large inverter. So we'll use this block of wood. And now we can support the inverter right there. And this block of wood will act as a way to keep the batteries locked into place and not allow them to bounce up and down. Okay, so we got the inverter locked into place. Clearly gonna put the charge controller over here. Probably something around there. Uh, these charge controllers, you do wanna have some space above them. You don't wanna block the top part of it off. It needs airflow to go through the bottom and out the top. The shunt will just place on this section right here near the main battery negative terminal. We don't really want them touching the shunt because this could get could potentially get warm. So we're gonna connect our main negative to our shunt. And of course, that'll be the spot that says two battery minus. So when you install your shunt, make sure you're putting it in uh, the right direction. Otherwise, it's gonna read improperly. We're gonna install the, the jumper wire between the two batteries to place them in series. And we're gonna hook up our main negative cable to our inverter from the shunt. And then we're gonna hook the other end of that to our inverter here. And we're also going to hook up a 10 gauge wire for the negative side of our charge controller to the same spot here. And to make sure that there's not a wire just kind of dangling around that can touch this terminal here, we're gonna poke this up to the charge controller first. The high current cables and terminals, you'll always want those on your terminal post first, and then you can follow up with the uh, lower current cables. And lastly, we're gonna add the main positive cable. I have a fuse attached to this as well, so that's gonna connect to the, the directly to the battery with the fuse. 
and then to the inverter. And then I have the positive 10 gauge wire for the charge controller. And I've added this 40 amp MIDI fuse because in the last video I used this blade style fuse holder and it is a 10 gauge wire as well. But I didn't like how hot, how warm this got. So I'm gonna try the, this one out and see if it uh, does any better as far as not being so hot. So we'll go ahead and screw that down. There's a nice little cover that goes over that. And we'll connect that to the positive side of the charge controller. And uh, we'll hook up our main positive cable from the battery with the fuse. And before we touch this to the positive terminal of the inverter, we need to pre-charge the capacitors in the inverter with this resistor. That'll prevent us from getting a large spark when we connect this. And that should be long enough, maybe about 10, 20 seconds. Uh, we got a tiny spark, that's fine. And then on top of that, the positive of the charge controller will connect here. And we actually got a spark from the charge controller. So maybe we should have pre-charged the charge controller as well. <laughs> okay, everything's connected. Uh-oh, one thing we forgot. We need the positive wire for the shunt. And that connects to the shunt here. And it has a little fuse in it as well. And for now, we'll just run it behind the inverter. And that needs to connect directly to the main positive of the battery terminal. That way it can read the most accurate voltage reading from the battery. If you put it elsewhere, it's going to get the incorrect voltage reading. Okay, now everything is completely connected. We should be able to turn our inverter on now. And it is it's showing 122 volts AC and 26.7 DC. We've got a flashing blue light on our shunt, so we should be able to connect to it via Bluetooth. And we also have a flashing light on our MPPT controller, indicating that it is on. So next what we do, need to do is hook up some solar to this. Okay, so I got solar hooked up. I haven't flipped the switch yet. And here's the app for the Victron. But I've got a big cloud covering the sun right now. It was just super sunny and that big cloud moved in. So I guess we can go ahead and flip the switch and see what we get. So, all right, here we go. Solar on. I got a measly 70, 80 watts. Yeesh. Okay, and I also got the app for the shunt here. We're at 92% because I did drain some power off so that we could uh, load some solar power in. And, um, well, we've got the uh, media U-shaped AC unit. This is the in, uh, an inverter AC where it has the variable speed uh, compressor that runs at the speed of the re what's required to actually cool. These have soft start, so they start off start up real softly. And these are just really awesome AC units. I have the stand-up version of this in my garage, but uh, we can go ahead and turn it on. While we're waiting for some sun, we can run the AC. And yes, I know it's in it's fully indoors and we're getting the heat from the condenser. I, I'm fully aware of that. I'm just using it for a load right now. So you can see we are pulling almost 700 watts. We can put this on the lowest setting and see what it does. Seems to be, yeah, starting to come down a little bit. Yeah, look at that. Under 500 watts now. Oop. 
under 400 watts now. Look at that, under 300. Well, briefly under 300. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so these are really efficient ACs. You can you can turn it down and it'll just sip power. I've seen the, my stand-up unit in the garage go under 300 watts, like somewhere around 250, 300 watts. And we've still got that giant cloud cover. All right, I think it's gonna start opening up. So I'm gonna turn the solar on. All right, we got 180. Oh, getting there, getting a little higher. Over 500. All right, come on, come on. Is that all we're gonna get? Ah, there might be some more clouds moving over. <laughs> oh man. Oh well, well we got a little over 500. In theory, this charge controller should get us about 840 watts in this 24 volt system. Look how small the profile is of this system here. Like you could literally, oh look, we got some more sun. 660, 665. I mean, this thing is just self-contained. You could actually take a board, build a board like this and hang it up on your wall or something like that. Or even take this whole thing and, and put it in your van or your RV or just use it for backup power. I think this is going to be the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll put links in the description for the products that I used here. And if you do enjoy this content, please hit the like and subscribe button really helps the channel out a whole lot and I'll catch you on the next one.